Hello, this is Paul Edmonds at finishyoursong.com. Got another video here for you looking at sends. This time I want to look at the issue of sidechains. So, what is a sidechain? Well, it's a way of activating an effect by using something other than the sound that the effect is modifying. In a video on inserts we looked at how you bring the signal from your track through your channel through the effect and that goes on to the stereo output. What a sidechain does is it uses a signal from another track to activate the effect. So the sidechain is the input from the other track which is a send from the other track. Each DAW uses slightly different terminology but where you bring your effect up to edit you will see there will be an activate key input or sidechain button and in Cubase it's that little symbol there. So let's have a look at this in practice. I'm going to look at a couple of classic uses of side chaining and both use a compressor uh, but for slightly different reasons. The first is to stop two instruments getting in the way of each other. What we've got here is a standard disco drum pattern. And to go with it we have a bass player who's determined to play something a little less classic than the standard octave walk. So, how do we stop the bass guitar from trampling on the kick drum? Let's play them both together. The answer is we use a compressor. We'll take a signal from the kick drum which I've separated out from the rest of the kit and we'll take that kick signal and that will then activate a side chain on the compressor to make sure that the bass guitar is ducked whenever the kick is hit. So we'll just go to here and we'll activate our compressor, double click on it and we'll activate the side chain. Now, we'll just leave that open for a moment. Go back to our kick drum, and on the sends, we can pick a side chain for the bass guitar compressor. That's, we'll activate that, and we'll leave that at 100% send. And now, when we play the drums, we'll see compression taking place, the gain reduction coming in on the bass guitar. It's kind of a subtle thing but it just gives that little bit of space for the bass and the drums not to trample on each other. Um, what I would say is of course I've not applied any effects or EQ to these sounds, they're just the raw sounds to show you the principle of how this works. So, the other way in which it's been classically used, we'll just mute that out, is to create a rhythmic effect on a pad sound. So here we've got our choir and our drums together. Now what we'll do is we'll activate the compressor, just open that, activate the side chain, and now when we go back to the kick we can see here that there is actually a choice of side chains because we've still got the bass guitar one and we've got the choir. You could in theory send the signal from the kick drum to both, but we'll just put that back onto the choir 
activate it as a send out. And now when we listen to the choir, we'll hear the compression taking place. So those two classic applications of sidechain using a compressor. And now I'm going to have a look at a couple of applications of these in a real mix. Okay, so what we have here is a real mix and we're gonna have a look at two places in the mix where I actually used a sidechain. One on the compressor and one on a different plugin. The main instrument that runs through my mix of this song is the acoustic guitar, which is fine. But at the point when Joe takes a solo, I felt that the acoustic was just a bit too in your face. Now I could have automated the volume level, but I didn't really want to do that. I just wanted to push the acoustic down slightly out of the way while the solo took place. And I didn't want any other automation on the lane. So what I did was I, as you guessed, sidechained the signal from the electric guitar to the acoustic so that the acoustic was very slightly compressed when the electric solo was playing. And this is the end result. As you can see, the maximum amount of compression is about 2.5 dB. So it's not phenomenal, but it was just enough to push the acoustic back out of the way and stop it clashing with the solo, which is what I felt was happening before. The other way that I used a side chain in this mix is on something that's a little more exotic. I have the Waves Vocal Rider plug-in. Um, and the way this works is that you get the entire mix going through a submix except the lead vocal. And the lead vocal goes to its own channel, which is where the Vocal Rider plugin sits. And the submix sends all of itself as a sidechain input to the Vocal Rider. So this becomes sensitive to the amount of music coming through and will ride the vocal to make sure that it remains audible depending on how much music is coming through. Then both of these go off to the stereo mix where you finally balance them and then that's your mix done. So this comes fairly late in the process. I'm just going to run it through this section and when you see the music or you, when you hear the music come in you'll see this little LED light up to show that the music is now beginning to affect the overall level of the vocal. I'm going to fade out with this and next time we'll have a look at parallel compression. Sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin, not in part, but the whole, is near.